Hello SpaceX fans, we are back with another video for you to quench your thirst for all things space. So buckle right in, because we are going on a flight to the stars. In this video, we will be bringing you up to date with the recent developments in the crazy world of SpaceX. The in-space manufacturing company Varda Space Industries has announced its launch services agreement with SpaceX. SpaceX has agreed to help Varda to launch its initial space factory aboard a SpaceX rideshare mission, deploying to low Earth orbit in 2023. Upon completion of Varda's in-orbit production run, the space factory will execute a de-orbit maneuver to re-enter the atmosphere and return finished products to customers on Earth. Headquartered in California, Varda Space Industries was co-founded in 2020 by Will Brewey, who is the current CEO, and spent nearly six years at SpaceX working on the Dragon spacecraft, and Delian Asparuov, Varda's president. We are excited for Varda's signing with SpaceX as its launch provider. The massive reduction in barriers to entry will allow us to finally bring the enormous benefits of space through microgravity manufacturing to so many people on Earth whose lives will change tangibly for the better as a result, said Aspurov. Varda Space says its mission is to build the first space factory, or, to be more precise, the first all-in-one space factory. While far from the commercial orbital laboratory, many at NASA would like to paint it as it is. The joint NASA-Russia International Space Station routinely hosts payloads for paying customers, some of which are focused on manufacturing materials that can only be made in microgravity. The products these experiments or miniature factories produce are then returned to Earth on one of SpaceX's Dragons. Still, the only spacecraft in existence capable of delivering large amounts of cargo from space to Earth, more than a decade after its debut. This is to say that orbital manufacturing is not exactly a new practice and has been ongoing at a very, very small scale for years through companies like Made in Space. What Varda Space wants to do then is repeat and normally expand the ISS's proven model. Rather than launching small experiments or many factories to the ISS, where a captive ISS crew is often available to troubleshoot or help maintain them, Varda wants to build its own small satellites with tiny re-entry capsules capable of returning up to 100 kilograms to Earth. Until now, almost all in-space manufacturing research has been conducted in the International Space Station, while research from the ISS has demonstrated that it is possible to manufacture in-space initiatives, that it is possible to manufacture in-space innovative materials and products that can help to revolutionize industries back on Earth. There is currently no pathway to commercialization. Varda highlights that prior to more recently, manufacturing in orbit was impossible to scale due to the cost, complexities, and regulatory hurdles. However, the combination of SpaceX's new competitively priced rideshare program, the FAA's new streamlined regulatory framework, and the Biden administration's executive order on the industrialization of space has enabled cost-effective access to orbit. I am excited to use SpaceX as our launch provider because their reusable launch vehicles have proven to be highly reliable and cost-efficient, providing the certainty and unit economics that we rely on to deliver unprecedented access and value to all kinds of new products that can only be manufactured in space. Two months after the company announced it had raised more than 53 million US dollars in funding, Varda Space now says that it will launch the first of its custom-built space factories on a Falcon 9 rideshare mission in Q1 2023. In August, Varda revealed that it had contracted with the small launch company, Rocket Lab, to purchase three of its Photon satellite buses, each to serve as a sort of mothership for each Varda-built re-entry capsule. Based on Rocket Lab's successful electron rocket kickstage, Photon adds solar panels, batteries, avionics, more propellant, and optional propulsion upgrades to create an off-the-shelf satellite bus capable of supporting and powering onboard payloads. Instead of having to build and qualify their own satellites, Photon thus allows certain customers to focus their time and resources on developing the payloads they want to deploy and services they want to operate. No need to reinvent the wheel, in other words. Varda Space appears to be the first company intent on fully taking advantage of that opportunity. And to great effect, given that the startup has raised more than $50 million less than a year after it was founded. 
Additionally, with its SpaceX launch contract, Varda Space has now effectively revealed that Rocket Lab has no clause preventing Photon customers from launching their procured satellite buses on rockets, not built by Rocket Lab. While dedicated small satellite launchers like Rocket Lab's Electron offer some benefits, they do so at a huge premium. While an Electron launch carrying 200 kilograms to a sun-synchronous orbit is believed to cost around $7.5 million, a slot on a SpaceX rideshare to a similar but not as perfectly tailored orbit would cost the same customer about $1 million, practically a magnitude cheaper. Rocket Lab's Photon likely costs just a few million dollars and comes by default with a propulsion system capable of refining the spacecraft's orbit after a one-size-fits-all rideshare launch. That means that manifesting a Photon-based satellite on a SpaceX rideshare could likely cut the cost of buying and launching a new satellite in half, and maybe further. The question then is whether Varda can take those potentially substantial cost savings and design and manufacture a tiny orbital re-entry capsule that's cheap enough to make its free-flying space factories competitive with the International Space Station. The company, though, has been vague about exactly what it will manufacture in space, mentioning a range of high-value products like pharmaceuticals to optical fiber. Asparov declined to identify what material the first spacecraft will produce, saying the company would announce it once it signed a contract with the customer. He said there's a 50% chance that could happen in the next six months. He added the company wants to take advantage of research done on the International Space Station as it prepares for its first mission. The ISS has done a wide variety of materials. We're not doing new science, he said. The company is working on the technologies needed for space manufacturing that Asparov said will give it a competitive advantage. But that engineering is not nearly as challenging as developing the re-entry capsule that will return the materials to Earth. Strictly speaking, re-entry is harder than any manufacturing hardware apparatus, Brewey said. Hitting the atmosphere at Mach 28 is the hardest problem. Varda's goal is to unlock the benefits of microgravity, which can only be found for sustained periods in space, for manufacturing novel materials like bioprinted organs or specialized semiconductors. The startup bets that the potential market for such materials is high enough to make the effort worth it. The spacecraft will be one of many objects aboard the Falcon 9 rideshare mission, a new lucrative program that spreads the cost of going to space between customers by allowing them to essentially carpool to space. SpaceX's promises to slash the cost of launch to as low as $1 million for an individual customer looking to send up to 200 kilograms of payload to sun-synchronous orbit. With this, we have come to the end of the video. Congrats on having such a great attention span. Let us know how excited you are about the new ventures of SpaceX down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until next time.